Hello students and welcome to my channel Maths Hub. So today in this video I'll tell you about the solutions of second and higher order linear differential equations with constant coefficients. So now let us first try to understand what type of differential equations are this and how do we solve it. So first of all you should be know you should be knowing the difference between a homogeneous differential equation and a non-homogeneous differential equation. So whenever we write a differential equation so you here you can see that the order of this differential equation is n. So when we write all the terms on rearranging the terms, if we cannot shift any term depending on the independent variable on the right hand side, then that equation is said to be a homogeneous differential equation. So here you can see that y is your dependent variable and x is your independent variable, right? So in this differential equation, if you rearrange the terms, you will find that there is no term depending on x. Every term here, a0, a1, an, they are all linear, they are all constants. And here you can see that we have y, right? So you cannot shift any term depending on the independent variable on the right hand side. So that is why this differential equation is called a homogeneous differential equation. Well, if on the right hand side, if I write the term g of x, so what is happening? This term is purely containing x and x is your independent variable. So this will be termed as a non-homogeneous differential equation. That means whenever a differential equation is given to us and in rearranging the terms, we can keep all the dependent terms on the left side and there is nothing on the right hand side. That means that equation, differential equation, will be termed as homogeneous. And if on the right hand side, we are able to shift a term containing the independent variable, then that equation will be termed as a non-homogeneous differential equation. Right? Now, how do we solve these non-differential, non-homogeneous or a homogeneous differential equation? So before we move on to a higher order linear differential equation, let us try to understand what is a second order linear differential equation. So when we say second order linear differential equation, it means that the order of the differential equation is 2, the degree is 1, and there is no term containing the product where we have the dependent and its derivative. So here, you can see that the differential equation given by equation number 1, that is d2y by dx square plus a1 dy by dx plus a2y is equal to b times x. So this is a case of a non-homogeneous differential equation. So here you can see that the order is 2, degree is 1, and a1, a2, they are all constants, right? Now, what about what happens when bx becomes 0? So when bx becomes 0, if it is a non-zero term, it is a non-homogeneous linear differential equation. If bx is equal to 0, then it will be called as homogeneous, right? Now, what are the alternate forms? How can we, what are the other notations of writing equation number 1? So we know that d2y by dx square can also be written as y double dash. Right? So we can also write it as y double dash plus a1 y dash plus a2y is equal to dx. And then similarly, we can convert this differential equation in this form. We can give the notation d by dx as the operator d. So I can write this as d2y plus a1 dy plus a2y is equal to bx. And then I can take out y common from all the terms. And I'll get a differential equation marked by equation number 3. So these are the alternate forms of equation number 1. Right? So here d means d by dx as I already said. d2 means d2 by dx square. Similarly, if it is a third order differential equation, you will define d3 as d cube by dx cube. Right? So now let us assume, now understand how do we calculate the solution. So we got to know what is a non-homogeneous differential equation of second order. Now what is the general solution? Now your general solution, it comprises of two parts. One is the complementary solution and the second part is the particular integral. Right? So when do we get the complementary solution? Complementary solution basically represents the solution of the homogeneous part of your differential equation. And particular integral represents the solution of the non-homogeneous part of the differential equation. So if you are given a homogeneous differential equation, 
then your general solution will only contain the complementary solution and if the solution if your differential equation is a non homogeneous differential equation then your solution will contain both the parts that is the complementary solution and the particular solution right okay so now let us understand the rules for calculating the complementary solution so first of all you will be given a second order differential equation so first of all let us convert this differential into into the auxiliary form how to convert it into the auxiliary form what we will do we will try to represent this equation as a times we will replace d by dx with the operator d so this is a into d2y plus b into dy plus c into y is equal to 0 So I can take out y common from entire equation. So I get a into d square plus b into d plus c into y is equal to zero. Now in this, when we are solving it, that means we need to calculate the value of y, right? Now when the product is equal to zero, either y is zero or the bracketed term is equal to zero. Y cannot become zero because if y is zero, we are solving for y, right? So that means the bracketed term is zero. so this bracketed term is called the auxiliary equation so that means the first step is by converting the given differential equation into the auxiliary equation right so once we get the auxiliary equation what we will do we will try to calculate the roots of the auxiliary equation by converting this into an algebraic expression so how to convert this into an algebraic expression we will put d equal to some variable m because this is in the form of an operator so this equation will become am square plus bm plus c is equal to 0 and this becomes an algebraic equation of degree 2 so here we can calculate the roots of this equation how to calculate the roots we will get two roots by the quadratic formula so m1 will be minus b plus under root b square minus 4ac upon 2a and m2 the second root will become Minus b minus under root b square minus 4ac by 2a. Now, once the roots are calculated, depending upon the nature of the roots. Now, what can the roots be? The roots can be equal, they can be distinct, and they can be imaginary. Right. So, these are the three categories of the roots. So, in these two cases, the roots are real roots, and the third one is the case of imaginary roots. so depending upon the nature of these roots we will classify our solution so let's classify the first type of solution when the roots are real and distinct so we got two roots if the two roots are both real and they are distinct that means they are different m1 is not equal to m2 then what is the solution the solution the complementary solution is c1 e raised to power m1x plus c2 e raised to power m2 right so you need to remember these solutions then the second case is when the roots are real and equal so that means we get two roots m1 m1 and the roots are real and they are equal m1 is equal to m2 so then what is the solution the solution is c1 e raised to power m1 x plus c2 x into e raised to power m1 x that means earlier when the roots were real and distinct it was c1 e raised to power m1 x plus c2 e raised to power m2 x so here m1 and m2 are same so this will become m1 and we will multiply the second root the second same root with the power x right okay and the third case is when the roots are complex so we know that whenever the roots are complex they always exist in pairs so a plus minus iota b are the complex root so according to this what is the solution the solution is e raised to power ax into a times cos bx plus b times sin bx so this becomes your root the solution right so now let, let us try to analyze the special cases of finding out the complementary solution suppose you are solving a one order differential equation and you get only one root then in that case what is your complementary solution the complementary solution is simply c1 e raised to power m1 x two real and distinct roots we have already done c1 e raised to power m1 x plus c2 e raised to power m2 x two roots if they are equal real and equal 
we get c1 e raised to power f1x plus x times c2 e raised to power f1x, right? Then is the third, fourth case. When we get three and equal roots, all the roots are same. So here what we will do, we will write the first one as c1 e raised to power m1x. Second one is x into c2 e raised to power m1x. For the third same root, we will again multiply with another x. So it will become x squared c3 e raised to power m1x, right? Then is when we have a pair of imaginary roots, alpha plus minus iota beta. In that case, our root, our solution is e raised to power alpha x, c1 cos beta x plus c2 sin beta x. Then the last case, when we have two pairs of imaginary and equal roots. So in that case, e raised to power alpha x we will get. Since alpha alpha is appearing twice, beta is appearing twice, we will write cos beta x c1 plus c2x plus sine beta x c3 plus c4x, right? So these are the special cases that we will get once we are solving the complementary solution, right? So now let us try to analyze these rules with the help of the following exercises. So the first exercise is, we need to solve the differential equation y double dash plus 3 y dash is equal to 0. So first of all, let us convert this into an auxiliary form. So this is d square plus 3d into y is equal to 0, right? So the auxiliary equation becomes, the auxiliary equation is, d square plus 3d is equal to 0. So let's convert this into an algebraic expression. Let d is equal to m. So we get m square plus 3m is equal to 0. So on solving, you'll get m into m plus 3 is equal to 0. So m is either equal to 0 or m is equal to minus 3, right? So you can see that both the roots are real and distinct. So what is your solution? Y complementary is C1 e raised to power 0x plus C2 e raised to power minus 3x. So we know that e raised to power 0x is 1. So this is C1 plus C2 e raised to power minus 3. Right? Okay. Let us try to solve another question. So we have y double dash minus 10 y dash plus 25 y is equal to 0. So what is your auxiliary equation? So the auxiliary equation is d square minus 10 d plus 25 is equal to 0. So let us put this d equal to m. So we get m square minus 10 m plus 25 is equal to 0. So from here, you can see that this is m minus 5 whole square is equal to 0. So we get two roots and both the roots are same. So when both the roots are same, then what is your complementary solution? It is c1 e raised to power 5x plus second we'll multiply with x e raised to power. Right? So that is my complementary solution, right? So let us try to analyze one more exercise. So let us solve this. We have y double dash plus 6y dash plus 25y is equal to 0. So what is my auxiliary equation? The auxiliary equation is d square plus 6d plus 25 is equal to 0, right? So from here, let us put d is equal to m. So we will get m squared plus 6m plus 25 is equal to 0. So from here, let us solve this. m comes out to be minus b plus minus b square minus 4 into a into c. So it is 4 into 2500 divided by 2 into 1, that is 2. So this is minus 6 plus minus 100 minus 36 is 64. So it is minus 64. So you will say that it is 8 iota divided by 2. So it is minus 3 plus minus 4 
iota. So we get one root as 3 plus 4 iota and the other root is minus 3 minus 4 iota. So the roots, they exist in pairs. So in that case, what is my complementary solution? So it is e raised to power. Now if you compare it with a plus minus iota b, what is your a? a is minus 3 and b is equal to right so from here we get e raised to power ax so it is e raised to power minus 3x c1 cos bx c1 cos 4x plus c2 sin 4x right so this becomes my so i hope all the rules are clear so you may try these exercises so you can solve this equation right so here it is a plus sign over here right so do try these questions and do put it in the comment section whether you were able to solve the questions or not so here we have an equal to sign this is equal to zero right and try this question also so again we have a plus sign over here and an equality sign over here right so do try these problems right and do tell me in the comment section whether you were able to solve it or not right so if you like the video do hit the like button and those of you who have not subscribed my channel do subscribe my channel to get the latest updated video and believe in yourself and you will be able to succeed thank you so much